you have already met uh, the presenters, uh, Chetana, um, Elizabeth, and Sudakara, um, and you haven't met me yet. Uh, since I'm the least important panelist, I get introduced last. Um, my name is Augustine Fosu. I'm Deputy Director of UNU Wider, Helsinki. Now, it is your turn, audience. Questions, comments, uh, please uh, be precise and brief. Please proceed. Uh, thank you for the stimulating presentations. Uh, my, my question is for Mr. Sudakara. Yeah. You talked about estimating costs for cooking, water lightning, water eating and lightning. Can you just give us an idea how you did it? You know, there are several methodologies. Estimating the costs for cooking, water eating and lightning. How did you go about it in your own case? Because one of the things I'm looking forward to here is to get some practical solutions to, to problems. And then you also talked about aligning the actors at the various levels. Whose responsibility would that be precisely? Thank you. Shall we take a few questions and then uh, the presenters can respond? Uh, please proceed, uh, Innocent. Uh, thank you very much. Um, my question is a follow-up to what uh, she just uh, mentioned. In estimating the, the cost, the losses, for example, the economic losses you, uh, you made mention about, what, uh, on what did you base those estimates? On which parameters, for example, did you base your, 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 your estimates? Thank you. Third question, comment. Okay. Please proceed. Yeah, please. Um, hello. Yeah, I, I basically have three um, maybe observations or questions. One is a simple one to Mrs. Remedio. Uh, do you include mined coal as a biomass, fossil coal? I don't mean charcoal, but fossil coal. You include that as biomass as well. You don't, okay? Because it originates as a, from biomass. Uh, the other aspect is to Mrs. Chowdhury. Uh, you gave all those uh, tabulations, etc. but I, I might have missed the early part as to whether that relates to the whole of India or to a part of India. The whole of India. Well, uh, roughly speaking, I can tell you that what you have shown would not relate to Goa. To Goa, you see, because over there it's a very different scenario with fuel use. A lot of LPG is used, etc., and less coal, less uh, biomass, actually. But I don't have figures to prove what I'm saying, but that's uh, my observations. Um, and then the last thing is, uh, the, there's a tremendous tabulation of solutions to the question, the last speaker, um, Mr. Basireddy. Uh, my question really is that India is full of tabulated solutions, but what are the chances that India can implement those solutions? Uh, sure, please proceed. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much, uh, all three of you, for a wonderful presentation. Uh, perhaps I should stand. Uh, my question goes to uh, the first presenter, uh, second presenter, uh, Ms. Chaudhary. Why are you talking about CDM at this point in time? I mean, CDM is almost into greatest degree uncertainty at the moment. And could you just justify why you're actually talking about CDM at this point in time, the first, first point? Uh, the second point, I think, uh, the point that he made is, I think in India is full of heterogeneity as it comes. The national picture that you present may not actually reflect the actual situations in, the real situations in the states. So why didn't you try to see what exactly happens at some states representatively selected, one poor state, one richer state, 
that would have probably given uh, a real picture than a, a absolutely a macro picture which cannot be attributed to any state as he's saying Goa could be different or Orissa could be different from what observations we made at national level, right? Uh, the one question for the first presenter is, you have rightly shown that the wood fuel, our biofuel, is representing about 12.2% of the total energy consumed or demanded, whatever it is. One problem with renewable energies is, can it really take care of the growing demands of energy in the world? That limitation perhaps is there, and with that limitation, how do you justify wood or biofuels as good energy alternative for you know, GHG mitigation? Thank you very much. Um, one more. Okay. <coughs> Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'm Abbebe from uh, Ethiopian Development Research Institute, Ethiopia. Uh, just a small question for the first presenter. Uh, she said that income is one of the most important determinants for energy choice. Uh, uh, though I haven't seen anything that relates, you know, uh, income with energy choice. But the literature also emphasizes the role of uh, non-economic factors in uh, determining the choice of uh, uh, energy, uh, especially by households like education, attitude, culture, and so on, are much more important than income, as 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 some as some literature shows. So. Uh, if it is, I mean, in the future, if it is possible, I would like you to just uh, look at, you know, the role of these non-economic factors in affecting fuel choice or in just making, you know, a transition from uh, lower quality uh, energies like, uh, energy sources like biomass to higher quality or moving up, you know, the energy ladder uh, hypothesis. Thank you. Uh, thanks, Malcolm Smart from DFID. Uh, my question, I, I guess, is to the first and maybe the second presenters. Where you've done analyses of the introduction of fuel-efficient stoves, have you looked at the rebound effect? So this is the effect whereby uh, if you bring in a more efficient form of uh, equipment, uh, people may very well, there's an income effect, and people may very well consume more. So you, you, know, you may cut by half the amount of fuel you use, therefore you may start cooking things that take longer to cook because it's cheaper. Have, have, has there been analysis of this? Thank you. Anyone else? All right. I think we probably have enough. Um, perhaps you can start from the uh, seat in permutation. Uh, Chatana, followed by Elizabeth, and then Sudakara. The first question is about the estimation of cost of cooking. Uh, it is uh, simple. One is uh, biogas plants. We have uh, Hachiomer, that is a community biogas plant, plants for a village, okay, 100 households village. We have estimated the costs and we also have estimated the <coughs> infrastructure cost, that is pipelines, etc. We also estimated the wages. There is an NREGA wage uh, <coughs> uh, structure is there. We all have to take into consideration on the number of households in a different uh, villages, that how many number of uh, plants are required, and the cost for um, infrastructure. There are three. One is the capital cost for constructing the biogas plant, then infrastructure cost, then is the operation and maintenance cost, which includes wages. That is the way we have estimated the cost for cooking. And for lighting, uh, what we have taken was we have categorized the households into three types. The first type of households, it is not at all possible, possible to supply centralized electricity, particularly the hilly areas. We know the estimation of uh, number of households in hilly areas. The second type of households, uh, that is nearly 8% of the population, population, even though central electricity can go, but uh, it's not. <clears throat> At present, it's not served with electricity. That is the type of uh, household, second type. Third type of households are those, even though in the village, electricity is available, the households cannot be uh, obtained because of affordability problem. So we have estimated the cost, how much it is a, uh, a combination of decentralized, but centralized electricity, capital cost, as well as operational maintenance cost were taken. And secondly, about the economic losses, 
economic losses what we have taken is how many hours does uh, starting from going to the um, nearly 2 to 3 kilometers per day how many hours each uh, household has to spend for obtaining the fuel wood for cutting it as well as for cooking it um, and there is a wage structure nrega government of india wage rate we have taken into consideration for 8 hours how much it's going to cost so total economic loss losses we have estimated using this information and uh, regarding uh, tabulated solutions uh, uh, my dear friend might have forgotten about the um, cable uh, this one, cable network it's almost in all the villages cable network is uh, being operated by the uneducated socially entrepreneurs so in the complete India same is the case with the telephones and uh, network particularly in rural uh, areas uh, what I just wanted to tell you is it's it's uh, <clears throat> I am not telling it's simple, but it's not at all difficult. It's not at all difficult for the government to facilitate. It's a, the role of the government is to facilitate. It's, I did discuss with many gov government organizations member. I actually was in the planning commission for uh, to, uh, preparing the twelfth plan report, particularly pertaining to energy efficiency. I interacted with st stakeholders and I actually made my presentation uh, presentations. But the only problem is the indifference. Many of the just like you, oh, we have seen many um, <clears throat> uh, models like this. It's not going to work, but. I, uh, I am from a village, village. I interact, I interact with the many, there are many young entrepreneurs and uh, that is the reason I told. I need not have to tell them. Actually, they are very good at it. What they need, need is financial backing and as a mentor, <clears throat> somebody has to tell, uh, tell them how to go about, not as an academician, as an industrialist. So it is as a, some sort of a parental this one, attitude. That's what is important. I, for the past 10 years, I interact with various stakeholders. It, it, is, uh, it is feasible, it is possible, and it is practical. Thank you. So the car is better place. So the question of whether the renewable energy is enough for the world's uh, energy demand, I'm not really an expert in renewable energy, but my guess is that at the moment definitely it's not, and uh, the costs uh, are prohibitive, and uh, uh, it's 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 very interesting. For instance, during the World Forestry Congress in 2009 in Argentina, there was a votation. And it turned out, you know, uh, whether you are pro or anti-bioenergy, and the result was 49 and 50. So uh, 49 and 51. So it's like a tie. Uh, it's like a tie. It was very interesting. And um, uh, definitely, well, if, if climate change is caused by, you know, the use of fossil fuels and so on, uh, the offer, the proposal to counter that is to use none you know, fossil fuel, and, and and so the renewables would come into play, but whether or not it's, it's, it's sufficient to feed the world, I don't think so at the moment, because of the cost, the technology, and, and so on. To so the question of whether income is uh, the sole determinant or influences the use of uh, bioenergy and wood fuels, well, it's a, an area-based situation, it's a case-to-case -case situation, but According to our study, it does play a major role in the choice of primary cooking fuel. But then, whether primary or secondary, uh, it's it's a matter of culture. It's a, soci a very socio-economic uh, situation, and uh, particularly in the Philippines, you know, we have the uh, uh, we have a major. Uh, cooking device in the kitchen, but outside the kitchen, outside the ha house, we have uh, an improvised uh, charcoal stove, for example, to to, to heat uh, water or to tenderize meat. So that's why we have secondary, so we use multiple fuels. So income really plays a major role there. And to the question of the rebound, thank you for that idea. We have not done, any, uh, we have not done it, but uh, I think it's a very interesting thing to do in the next round of, of things, and particularly in 2008, uh, uh, there was a, uh, there was a group that came to us and doing work in uh, 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 cook stoves, and uh, it was very interesting that uh, 
charcoal now is uh, is a very dramatic increase in the demand for charcoal. So I was so tempted, in fact, to uh, but I waited for this time so that we have a 10-year gap for our studies. But definitely, I will include that. Thank you. But uh, I, I I suppose I would uh, need to ask for more information about this rebound effect. Thank you, Elizabeth Machitana. Thank you uh, for the questions. Uh, for the answer of why I am discussing CDM, obviously there are controversy regarding the CDM, but uh, uh, for before scrapping the thing, we should need the uh, need to discuss the cost and benefit analysis of that. In India, people are facing problem. I mean, people are uh, there are so many people who are dependent on bi biomass and uh, fossil fuel. So. Uh, and uh, the uh, they are using some inefficient equipments for um, cooking and lighting so uh, and uh, they don't have that much uh, fund to uh, buy a new efficient equipment so we are discussing whether the cdm can uh, can provide them with those uh, efficient equipments and uh, e even if we uh, the, uh, even if we uh, i mean Additionally, if we think the socio-economic benefit of the CDM projects, it, it's no, it is not only the case that it in increases efficiency, but also it increases uh, work particip participation rate and uh, the spread of education will be more because people are uh, now incurring a huge opportunity cost because of uh, collect, uh, collecting the fuel loot because uh, a huge uh, um, amount of time is spent by women and children as uh, Professor Reddy also said, for uh, collecting the fuel loot. And uh, peop the study over would be more. I mean, it will be a total, uh, I mean, the socioeconomic benefit will, would, would be, would, should be also considered, apart from the economic costs. And uh, uh, about the heterogeneity thing, obviously there are heterogeneity in different uh, states in India. Uh, different. I mean, state uh, the characteristics of states' energy consumption is different. But uh, my aim was to show how many people are there who are still uh, depending on the biomass and how much biomass they are using. So I mean, it is a cumulative number, uh, which is showing that in India, this much percentage of people are still using biomass. So I mean, for that reason, I took the total India, not the states. The analysis of states can be done, done in the similar way. I mean, it, it would be another study. And uh, the rebound effect about, the rebound effect I have not seen. But uh, the thing is that uh, when I see the cross-section data, as people move from lower income to higher income, as, as we go from lower income group to higher income group, there are people who are using more efficient energy, even if that is expensive. So, I mean, we can think that maybe there is some rebound effect that people will stick to the cheaper uh, uh, fuel, uh, fuels, but still uh, there will be people, considerable number of people, who will shift to the efficient fuels. That's all. So in India, um, they work on energy efficiency. Not many studies are there in the pre even though in Western countries they do it. But I know it's pretty well. Suppose earlier the expenditure is like $10. Due to energy efficiency, your energy expenditure comes down to uh, $5. We try to um, purchase some other devices, and there is an increase in your energy consumption levels. But uh, uh, I, I have not come across any, uh, any study. Uh, particularly about rebound effect and so on. But West, there are quite a few studies. Thank you. Um, I'm afraid it's, um, it is uh, time. Just, uh, just yes. Uh, okay. Quickly, please. A, a kind of a range of income within which it will be predominant and then uh, in a different range of income levels that may be as predominant as it will be. So, like I said, developed countries. I, I really wonder it will be as predominant as it is observed in the developed world because the range of income levels essentially matters. The change is okay, but the range within which it falls perhaps matters a lot, I mean, as I understand. Thank you. 
I think this is getting more and more interesting and exciting, but I've also been informed that I need to keep the time. That's my main responsibility. May I leave the residual to bilateral interaction, if you don't mind? The next plenary is such, uh, it's now, actually, maybe one minute from now, and I want to observe the time. I would like to seize the opportunity uh, to thank the presenters uh, for enriching us this afternoon, and to also thank you, the audience, for first, being here, and secondly, productively contributing to the discussion and having a real excitement this afternoon. Thank you all for being here. Thank you.